Are you dealing with debilitating adrenal fatigue or chronic fatigue syndrome? Today, I'm gonna to share with you several herbs that are amazingly powerful at addressing a lot of the different and varied symptoms you're experiencing. I'm also gonna share with you my personal experience with adrenal fatigue and how I've turned that around. Stay tuned for today's informative video. Happy Vlogmas! Welcome back to my channel. For all of you new joining us, welcome and happy holidays. I'm Dr. Melissa Gallagher. I'm a naturopathic physician. I actually got into the field of naturopathy battling my own illness and debilitating diagnosis of mononucleosis and adrenal fatigue. Those diagnoses were literally life-changing. In my early 20s, I was literally stuck in bed with what I thought was the flu. Fast forward to testing and, and more details that I actually detailed a year ago on another Vlogmas video. So I'll link there if you wanna watch that video, link up there or link down below where you can watch a little bit more about my story. But today I'm gonna to share with you herbs that I used then to bring me out of the fog of adrenal fatigue and really, really help turn around my mononucleosis. I still use these herbs and they're all adaptogenic herbs. Generally with adrenal fatigue, there are three core reasons why you are in this adrenal state. The first one is related to blood sugar imbalances. The second and extremely prevalent cause are hidden sources of inflammation. Literally your body, your cells are inflamed. Your brain, your heart, your stomach, your digestive system, your ovaries, your testes, all of your body organs and glands are inflamed. And third, probably the most crippling aspect behind adrenal fatigue, and that also accompanies adrenal fatigue, which is absolutely annoying, is sleep disruption. It can cause it and it can prolong it. So the herbs that I'm going to detail to you are considered adaptogenic immunomodulating herbs. These herbs target an assortment of the different symptoms that you're experiencing. Now, will these herbs completely turn around your adrenal fatigue? It really depends on a case-by-case -case basis, but I promise you that each individually and collectively, they will make you feel like you're living in a different body. That was my experience, and I'm gonna share with you in the order of importance that I place these with my patients just like you. Before I get kicked off in detailing all of these amazing, powerful herbs for you and how they can help heal you, these herbs and this video have been sponsored by and brought to you by The Reserve. I'll include links down below. As I detail each of the herbs, you can find links for each specific one if you want to choose and select certain herbs that you think would be beneficial. Number one in my category of all time best adaptogenic herbs is chaga. I've mentioned chaga before in a multitude of other videos. It's a powerhouse. It is the most potent natural occurring antioxidant that addresses the inflammation. It also helps you deal with stress. It can address cholesterol imbalances and it can help you balance blood sugar. There are tons and tons of clinical research and data on chaga. It's also linked to addressing tumors and reduction of cancer cell growth in the body. It will supercharge your immune system. This is a powerful agent in addressing all of the symptoms that you deal with in chronic fatigue and adrenal fatigue. So one of the things I wanna give a little caveat, if you are dealing with any autoimmunity, and this could run from RA to lupus to even Hashimoto's, Chaga is an immunomodulator that boosts our immune activity. It'll enhance the fighting cells. Now, on the flip side, if you have autoimmunity, we don't want to really turn on those immune cells that might additionally attack not only the virus that you might be dealing with or any pathogenic bacterial viral invasions, but also 
it might turn on immune attack of your thyroid or other glands. And it's not uncommon for adrenal fatigue to actually be an autoimmunity of itself where the body's attacking the adrenal glands. That's why we have the lower lowered cortisol level. So this is just one, just be aware of your own situation and make healthy, smart decisions in choosing chaga. Now chaga, it's my go-to if you want to prevent cancer, if you want to really, really boost just overall lowered inflammation. So this qualifies for many of you who might not even be dealing with any type of adrenal fatigue, adrenal burnout, it's powerful. Number two on my list is maca. So maca is not a stranger to any of you who regularly watch my videos. And thank you for all of you who do. I'm grateful for you this uh, Christmas holiday season. But maca is an amazing herb at balancing our hormones and particularly for women addressing PMS, PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. There is a partnership between adrenal fatigue and irregularity and irregular output from the ovaries. So if you are missing menstrual cycles, having irregular cycles, and even for women who are postmenopausal, maca is amazing. This is a Peruvian herb that is just, it is, it's such a wonderful herb. And this in a powder version, so if you're interested in how I mix this up, one of the ways that I will incorporate maca powder, I'll put this in some of my raw cookies, as well as I add maca, just a little bit, I'll add that to my collagen butter. And if you guys are curious about my collagen butter recipe, comment down below. I am going to be cooking that up for you if you want it here during Vlogmas. Two other benefits I wanna highlight about maca. One, maca is extremely potent and rich in vitamins and nutrients, good mineral content. So that's good for balancing and supporting your bodies and the nutritional need that your body has. The other thing that this does is it increases our glutathione intake, increasing the SOD, which if you're, if you're familiar with the, the video I posted, I'll click a link up there, you can watch it there, about hair loss, which that often is a symptom. And comment down below if you're experiencing the symptom of hair loss with adrenal fatigue. That was the major, major uh, troubling symptom, one of them. I mean, the fact that I couldn't get up out of bed or I could sleep for 16 hours a day was troubling, but, and, and all the wrong times, like at night I was awake, but during the day I just, I couldn't, I couldn't keep myself awake. With that increase of glutathione and sod, maca delivers good immune boosting, but also liver detoxing. And that's really good in pairing with its balancing of our hormones, which if you do have adrenal fatigue or any type of chronic fatigue, there is definitely a necessity for you to do some liver detoxing. If you want more on that topic, please let me know. I'd be happy to create more videos aimed for you on how to detox your liver. One of the most troubling aspects of adrenal fatigue is the brain fog that accompanies this condition. It is one of those things where you can kind of fake it till you make it in terms of getting around and being active. But when it comes to the brain fog, if you're working or you're in school, and I was both in school and working, I was getting my master's while I was still dealing with adrenal fatigue. That's really kind of what kicked off my need to go back to school. But the herb that was most potent for me is an herb called lion's mane. So let me share with you a few studies here. Lion's mane is a major antioxidant like chaga. It is a super anti-inflammatory. Most importantly, it triggers the nerve growth factor, meaning it stimulates our brain activity. So when you consume lion's mane, you wanna take this first thing in the morning and you also wanna take it no later than lunch. So if you get two doses of this, make sure it's before 2 p.m. Otherwise, you're gonna be stimulating your brain at all the wrong times. Just trust me on this. So lion's mane is generally the herb that you would employ or take if you're dealing with brain fog. Now, for many of you who might not be dealing with adrenal fatigue, but maybe you're dealing with brain fog from hormone imbalances or just general stress, or if you are wanting to prevent dementia and Alzheimer, lion's mane is a really good herb for the capacity to invigorate 
that nerve growth factor. These studies show that lion's mane is a very potent nerve protectant, a nerve tonic. It has neuroprotective properties and it also can address anxiety. The major studies also indicate that lion's mane can be beneficial for addressing anxiety and depression. And I even recommend it for some folks that have anxiety related panic attacks, which that's very, very significant in terms of minimizing just the brain wiring of how the body is addressing emotions and our thoughts and triggering the systems where we feel like we're having a heart attack. Lion's mane can be very beneficial in that category. It's not uncommon for adrenal fatigue to be accompanied with depression. And it's not uncommon for you to have anxiety, really intense anxiety with adrenal fatigue. It's all the neuroendocrine hormone imbalances, the neurotransmitters that get whacked out because of the low cortisol levels. Lion's mane addresses balancing that out. And that's why this is really, really key. I can't speak enough about the benefits of lion's mane. I'm gonna make a prediction here. I think lion's mane will soon be a more commonly known herb as it relates to addressing dementia and Alzheimer's, as well as preventing it. So I'm all about prevention. And really, lion's mane is potent, potent in just stimulating the brain. So if you are dealing with what I call the, I don't know where my keys are, or where's the pen and it's like in your hair, <laughs> who's done that? And even if you don't deal with adrenal fatigue, if you've ever had that experience, lion's mane is a really good solution for you. Think about nine months ago, I talked about this amazing five flavor fruit. This is a Siberian fruit. Shishandra is the name of this herb. Shishandra is amazing and it's called five flavor. It possesses all five flavors on the tongue and that in Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine, it's a balancer. This is a really, really amazing balancer. Shishandra is great for those who have fatigue in everyday tasks, like getting up out of bed, brushing your teeth, brushing your hair, taking a shower. If that fatigues you, this is a really good potent herb to balance that. The other thing is if you get fatigued at work or even working out, so fitness enthusiasts will use this five flavored berry in balancing that fatigue. There are amazing studies on the recovery for athletes who consume this, but more importantly for adrenal fatigue, fatigue is part of the diagnosis. This addresses that physical side. And then I actually like to pair these up together. So in the morning, in your smoothie, in your you know protein dense, whatever you're eating, if you're doing chia pudding or overnight oats or what, whatever, these two, lion's mane is going to address the mental. Shishandra will address the physical. Pair them up and you've got whole body kick in. Very, very potent, very power powerful. And last and final, because adrenal fatigue is often associated with mononucleosis, sometimes even Epstein-Barr, or just full-on burnout, what happens is when you have the adrenal fatigue, you don't have the adrenal output. Our adrenal glands are not putting out not only hormones, but they're not putting out the signals, the neurotransmitter signals to boost the immune system. So it's very, very common for you to get secondary and tertiary related infections or viral invasions. It's not uncommon and we, I'm not kidding you, we had a case when I was in college and this is where we think my history of mono exposure was great. We had, when I was a freshman in college, we had a girl on our floor, our dorm floor, have mono slash adrenal fatigue as her diagnosis. She went home at Thanksgiving and never came back to school because her younger sibling had a case of chicken pox. Our friend came down with the chicken pox that her sister brought home and her immune system was so weakened, her body could not battle the chicken pox and she never returned to school. It was, it was seriously, I think, one of the most horrifying, tragic, situations I've ever, I've ever been witness to or experienced. And to minimize the fact that when you have adrenal fatigue or Epstein-Barr or mono, or just are completely run down from stress, that our immune system, it takes a hit. I mean, seriously, like most of us can kick chicken pox, but when the immune system is so down and depressed, 
from low weekend adrenals, the body can't fight it. So it becomes extremely important if you are in a case where you've got multiple diagnoses like Epstein-Barr or mono, or even a weakened immune system, you don't heal well from infections or surgeries. Adding in elderberry can be extremely potent. If you follow me on Instagram, you know elderberry is part of our daily regimen. Myself, my family, particularly my four-year-old Gabriel, he's taken elderberry every day. We use elderberry in a lot of different ways, but the powder version is really great because you can throw it in, you can sneak it in, you can hide it. Not that it's a bad flavor, by any means it's not. It tends to be tart in a powder or when I boil it down in a tea. I actually use the elderberries themselves that are dried elderberry that I get from Sprouts and I will make a tea. You can add the powder to baked goods, you can add it to even ice cream. I've had friends who've made elderberry ice cream but there are a lot of good ways that you can incorporate this in your life. But what I want to share with you is elderberry is a powerful immune booster. It is what we call in the naturopathic world an immune superfood. And it definitely, especially cold and flu season, that tends to be something that's really important. If you are dealing with adrenal fatigue, cold and flu season can be very problematic and troublesome because your immune system just doesn't have the power, unfortunately, like our friend in college. So immune boosting is definitely a big part of addressing and supporting adrenal fatigue. So I've thrown a lot at you with presenting these five different herbs for addressing adrenal fatigue. I love each of these herbs individually. Collectively, they're a power punch to helping your body rebound, recover, and recharge, but more particularly addressing a lot of those problems, some symptoms that are giving you additional stress that you don't, you just don't have, you don't have any bandwidth to deal with any additional stress. And I'll be completely honest with you, it becomes really important that you take time for yourself, say no to as many things and people that you can and focus on yourself. Self-care, self-practice is going to be really key in helping you recover because it's not going to be something that's overnight. And in fact, for many of us who have dealt with that, it's just something we kind of have to have a regular routine, a regular pro protocol process that we always go back to that helps us balance. So these adaptogens literally help balance your body. Every day, adaptogens help you where you need it. Sometimes you need it more physically, sometimes you need it more mentally, sometimes you need it more hormonally. But every day, adaptogens will keep you balanced. They adapt to the environment you're dealing with at this hour and next hour and tomorrow. So adaptogens are extremely powerful and potent. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Let me know if you want me to talk a little bit more about this particular topic. I definitely welcome any of your feedback or commentary about these herbs, and I'd be happy to share more about the protocols that I've utilized that really turned my life around in terms of just coming back to life. And I always wanna share with you when you're using herbs or starting to experiment with herbs, like elderberry or lion's mane or shishandra or maca and then also with chaga go slow start out slow see how your body does whenever you're introducing a multitude of herbs you just want to kind of see how your body reacts and because adaptogens tend to be herbal in their orientation they are food and we do have some folks that have allergies or sensitivities. So just don't assume that you might be okay with all of them. So that's why take it slow, add one in, see how you do a few, in a few days, add another one in and see how your symptoms are. But I promise you, these herbs will change your life. They'll make you feel so much better. I'm so excited. So I wanna hear from you. When you do start to incorporate these, please comment and come back and let me know because I'm so inspired by you turning things around and I'm always happy to be a resource for you. And lastly, because it's Vlogmas and we love our ornaments, huh? I have an ornament for one lucky winner who comments down below, comment down below, ask me anything, comment about your experiences with these herbs. So comment down below for the chance to win this holiday ornament. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Happy Vlogmas. And I look forward to seeing you on tomorrow's Vlogmas video. See you later everybody.